Hello everyone, Banyuki here with another video, and today you're going to be seeing me playing CBS2 on the OG Xbox in 4K. And how are we doing this? Well, we're doing this through, I you guys can see it over there, that is the Pixel FX Morph 4K. And it's a pretty powerful scaler. Uh, I got this on the early bird special for about $350. And I must say, I'm quite impressed with it. Um, I've had it for a f couple of weeks now. And on release, it had a lot of bugs. It had a lot of issues. But now, after a couple of weeks, there's been about, oh, I don't know, maybe about four or five different firmware revisions. And I must say, they are uh, stamping out the bugs as soon as they can. Uh, one of the nicest ones that I see is they finally got, today, direct video working with the metadata with the Mr. FPGA. So I tried it out earlier. And when I first started messing around with the Mr. and the Pixel Morph, uh, I kept thinking, well, I mean, it looks okay, but um, it doesn't look as nice as going Mr. straight to this LG um, C1. But now with the new firmware, I've noticed, I don't know what they did with their, 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 their video pipeline, but it actually looks Pretty good now, very comparable from using uh, Mr. FPGA 1080p to upscale just directly, you know, letting the display upscale to 4K. Um, now it looks very comparable, so I'm quite impressed. But the thing that I like about the Pixel FX Morph, I mean, it, Mr. is going to be fine and everything for your retro, retro stuff. And Mr. has a very powerful uh, scaling engine on itself up to 1080p. But what it can do with other consoles, other sources, like, so right here, I have the Xbox using the Zedusa, which will kick out HDMI. And I have a Wii U, and I have a PS3, and they look phenomenal on this thing. So, as you know, the Achilles heels of the Morph right now is currently, it does not have analog input support at the moment. They are working on an analog bridge. Um... I'm in their Discord, they're saying quarter two. Um, maybe, maybe it won't happen. Um, they were legit on quarter one. They came in, uh, I think I got this unit right before my birthday on the 8th of March. And we are currently, as I'm filming this video, uh, the 20th of March. So what can this thing do? Well, I'll show you what it can do in its current format. So it could take HDMI signals. And what's nice about that is if you do have a RetroTink product that kicks to HDMI like I have one of the RetroTink classics or what's it called the RetroTink 2x and it'll take 240p of a component or as video or composite and you just hit the pass through mode it'll just digitize a signal you puppet you pass it over to the morph and it'll give you 4k so let's take a look at the Morph 4k in action so that there's a lot of ways to get your HDMI but I'm just using HDMI consoles but as you can see, here's the remote. It's a very bare bones remote. A lot of people say a lot of bad things about it. I think it's okay. Um, I, I'm not really sweating it. Um, you can use the web GUI as well. That's right. The Morph does have uh, Wi-Fi built in. So you could actually update it via Wi-Fi. You can set up your profiles, your mode lines. As a matter of fact, one of the profiles that I have right now set up for it is an uh imported from the mister what i mean by profile is i have my slot masks and i have my scan lines from the mister itself it's quite impressive that it is all compatible it's just you know i guess they're just lines of text so um the fact that the, you can import them in is pretty cool so uh the osd uh i moved the position of it to be down below because i wanted to do some lag testing up above and as you know, the time sleuth, it, it kicks it up to the upper right. So I move this guy to the lower, to the, excuse me, upper left. When you do your, your time, it goes top, middle, bottom. So um, one of the release uh, firmwares for the Morph had the, the modes for the speed uh, mislabeled. So now that's been fixed, and uh, it's actually faster than ever before. It's actually very close to OSSC speed. And as we know, OSSC is like the speed king. So this is now the bottom right here. And... You have different options so the input option is going to be you know hdmi right now that's all it's got and that's all i think i'm going to use um i just i have ways to get my consoles to hdmi but if you don't you can use other things like the ossc uh my cheese retro tank products and get you 
the HDMI, or you can actually mod your consoles themselves. I just use the little uh, adapters, like I said, the Zedusa for the Xbox here, and there's you know various other dongles and adapters out there. Try to get a good, reputable one. Uh, but if you do want to stay in the analog space on your consoles, you don't want to mod them and stuff like that, you just want to use RGB SCART, there's several different things you can do. I recommend the OSSC. So um, that was the input. Now in the video, you have your scaling options. So let's look into the scaling options. So as you can see right now, if you look down below, you see it as 720, 720 to 240p. And I'm actually downscaling this game because I actually like the way the sprites look better in 240p with the scan lines over 40p but if i was to go down to what it's supposed to be this is what the game looks like now and as you can see the scan lines are no longer as pronounced that's because it's actually putting the scan lines on a 40p image but if i use what's called i think they call it like decimation now if you look down below i change it to 240p so the prescale is times two, halved and now you're looking at the scan lines, it looks pretty good. Um, one of the reasons I like the GameCube version of this game is with Swiss, you can run it in 240p. Well, basically what we're doing now is making the game 240p. So it actually downscales the resolution from 720p, uh, excuse me, 720 by 240p to 720 to, excuse me, from 40p to 240p. Sorry, I just, the math it gets a little crazy sometimes. And you could do the you know the, the, the little things you could do with any scale. You can mess with the aspect ratio. Look at that. Oh, that looks horrible. And you can mess. You can zoom in. You can zoom out. Um, that right there is like you know make it to fit. But I like to over zoom a little, just like I'm playing on an actual CRT. So there is over scanning. So you can see it's 288 by 2160. But I like to bump it up a little bit. And now you know I lose a little bit of. It's a little bit of crop, but it looks pretty good to me still. But um, there's different types of interpolation and stuff like that. So you can really play around with this. You can make it softer. You, look, you make it look sharper. Uh, I leave it on sharp. I think it looks really crisp on this, this uh, LG OLED. Uh, so I'm going now to go to another option. Uh, this is for shifting and cropping. I haven't really played around with this much. Uh, on the Mr. using direct video, I did have to mess with it this morning. But um, basically, you know... I just messed around and now it's back to normal. So that's cool. Uh, it does have different de-interlacing as the motion adaptive. Uh, I haven't played around with these much because I don't really deal with too much of interlace um, that often. But I will probably look into it on the Mister. Uh, there's a lot of Saturn games with direct video. They're going to be in 40i. So I'm going to have to figure out a way. I'll just let this guy do its work. But motion adaptive, that's the one people mostly say is the best one. Uh, you do have some smoothing filters. Uh, I have asked Woozle if he can put in some of the RetroArch. Uh, there's one really good one that I like to call Scale Effects. Um, it, it hits hard, though. It's a very complex uh, shader. So, you know, doesn't know if it'll fit in the FPGA, but he will give it a shot. But as you can see, there's XBR, which smooths things out it's ridiculous. Oh, my goodness. It looks like emulation. Um, that's XBR. And there's one called HQX, which, you know, I mean, if you deal with emulators, you, you've seen these guys before. Uh, you know what to expect, and then they basically smooth out. I, I think they smooth it out too much, but if you want that for 3D games, hey, it might be a good look. But for pixelated 2D retro games, uh, I, I would usually just stick to scan lines. But, hey, at least the option is there, and uh, if you want to use it, they're there. Uh, here's the part that I like is the retro effect. So right now... Um, I was using actual regular scan lines and now I'm going to be going to adaptive and adaptive, you know, has the blurring a little bit. So you can do, you can go to off on and adaptive. I stick to adaptive. There's a glow where the, the, the scan, the, 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 the vibrancy, the colors glow over each other. Uh, you can do vertical scan lines if you really want that pizza, that grid look. Uh, I personally don't like it. Then you have my favorite one is the masks and here you can see I've actually taken some of the mass from my mister and thrown in there. And you can do that via the web GUI. It takes like two seconds. It's just an upload and bam. Uh, I really like the morphs, uh, the setup with, with the web GUI. I think it adds a lot. Instead of dealing with micro SD cards and stuff like that, you just go to the web GUI and just, you know, pretty much uh, hit a browse button and pick the file. And within seconds, it's there. So look, if I want to make it look like a JVC series, you know, a D series, I want to make it look like a Sony PVM. Actually, that looks quite nice. That looks really nice. It's a little dim, but I can mess with the gamma to make it to bring up the, the brightness a little bit. Um, 
it's nice. Uh, I did bring over one of my custom gammas, a CRT simulation from the Mister. I mean, if you have a Mister and you you've dealt with these masks and everything, the morph is not that far off of it. I mean, honestly, um, you can pretty much turn your thing, your your, your morph into a, a basically a, like a, a souped up Mister in terms of its video processing. But um, yeah, I like the way this looks. This looks really good. And here are the different resolution options. So these are the outputs. You can do 1080p 60, 1440p 60. I'm doing 4K 60 on this game. You can do 1080p 120, and you can do 1440p 120. And what's nice is when you do the 120 hertz, then you can start using black frame insertion if you really want that crisp motion clarity. Uh, and here is your different modes. Like I said, here's your BFI. Uh, here's your frame lock mode. There's minimal, there's triple buffering, there's normal. There's your color spacing. Um, you know, if you change it to like different stuff, it'll change the colors on the screen. If I get it back, uh, that's limited, but I usually just use full. Um, HLG to me makes a big difference on the HDR. As you can see, it says HLG HDR. Um, it, it makes, puts the screen into a brighter mode. So when you have the scan lines on, it doesn't impact that much. I mean, um, here it is on off and the screen looks significantly dimmer now. That's why if you're gonna use scan lines, I think HLG is the way to go. Uh, there is an HDR10 option, but right now the HDR10, as you can see, the gamma is completely off. It's very reminiscent to uh, like my projector upstairs. If I send it um, a movie that's HDR encoding with an SDR container, and you can do that on a projector, this is what that reminds me of. So whatever they're doing with the HDR, that probably needs to get patched out, but hey, it, HLG is working fine. It put, it's doing what I want to do, which is basically putting my TV in a higher brightness mode and keeping the colors the same. I'm good with that. I use my tone mapping. It's, it's great. Uh, VFR EMP, I believe that's, um, I, think, I think that's variable refresh rate. Let me just take a look. Uh, it's on auto. Yeah, VESA, FreeSync. Yeah, okay. So you got FreeSync, VESA. This, this TV uh, does both VESA and FreeSync, so I'll just keep it on VESA. Um, sorry, I'll go that. Uh, this is the one that came in this morning, which made me want to make this video. Uh, that's the direct video mode. Now, those who have the RetroTINK 4K, they're very familiar with that. Um, but what it does is it gets the metadata from the Mister directly, and it'll say, "Okay, I'm at this core." And if you have profile set up for those cores, it'll actually set it up. So I did try it out. It does work. Um, and because of that, I am going to use direct video with Mister. Um, now that I've been playing around with this thing for a bit, uh, I now I'm a believer. I'm a believer in direct video on the morph. Uh, I believe it is better than going straight from the mister. So I was saying that earlier, but you know, they, they're working on things and it's nice to see that they've been, uh, you know, really stamping the bugs out and it's becoming a really good product. I mean, it should be for $350, $400 if you buy it today. It should be a good product, but it's nice to see that they're on there and they're on top of it. And I got to give a credit to these guys. You know, they get mismaligned about coming out with, you know, digital only, but I'm good with it. Um, I like the fact that you can chain one of your previous scalers that, you know, just because it doesn't do 4K doesn't mean it's obsolete. It still gets the job done putting uh, uh, onto a, a, a TV. So I'm quite impressed with this product. Uh, I'm glad I didn't spend, you know, double the amount of money for something that might be a little bit better. I, I don't know. I don't have a, a Tink 4K to really do like an apples and apples comparison. Um, but I could tell you right now, I got this guy and it's pretty much handling everything I'm throwing at it. Uh, I'm going to play a little bit more with Mr. But basically I have the Mr. FPGA using direct video. I got the Xbox in 40p most of the time. I got a Nintendo Wii U that's, you know, going to be doing GameCube Wii and Wii U games in 720p, upscale to 4K. And then I got a PlayStation 3 that I'm going to leave in 720p and let that play in 4K. And that's pretty much my needs for this guy. Uh, for me, you know, spending more money for the analog stuff wasn't really, you know, it's not really for me. And if I do want to put the analog stuff on this TV, I can just bring my OSSC downstairs and just plug it up that way. So... Anyway, that's just the first impression on this guy. I'm very impressed with it. Uh, there were some issues at launch. I am now on 354, which came out this morning. But they've really, like I said, I got to give the guys credit. You know, Woozle is in the, um, you know, in the Discord. He's very, very receptive. He's, he's on top of it. Uh, Citrus PSI 3000. I've dealt with that guy for, you know, to, before I moved to Oregon, back, basically. 
guy did a mod for me on my Mega Drive. He probably doesn't even remember that. But, um, you know, these guys, I, I get it. There's a lot of drama and stuff like that. I'm not going to get into it. I'm just talking about the product here. But I, I had a feeling knowing their, their, their pedigree and their lineage and the products that they've put out before, I knew these guys weren't full of crap. I knew they would put something out. And it's glad that it's out there. And uh, competition is good, folks. We want competition. The more competition there is, the better, the more choices we get. And the more choices we get, the better for the consumer. So anyway, folks, have yourself a good one and take care.